Hello, it's uh, so good to, to be with you today. I haven't been here in quite a while. I've been a member of this church for 40 something years. I've been, uh, yeah, all the way back uh, uh, when I started ministry here. Uh, I was in uh, a junior church, my wife and I, and we had a couple of generations uh, uh, go through here. And uh, uh, we uh, ministered to the children. And then uh, we, I, I was uh, a deacon here at one time, a trustee, and we served uh, in uh, door knocking, did all kinds of things on the pulpit committee that brought uh, the pastor uh, in here. And uh, God uh, taught me a few things there. I was uh, looking at all these resumes that came in, and I, I, I talk, talked to a, a brother, Sam Davison, who was the head of the uh, Baptist Bible Fellowship at the time. I said, brother, I don't know what to do. I've never been in this role before. And he said, first thing you do is take all those resumes and throw them in the trash. God has already chosen a man, and you need to get with your men to pray that you'll recognize him when he shows up. And here we have the man that God uh, brought, brought to us. And uh, you, when you do things God's way, uh, it tends to uh, always work out uh, well. And uh, uh, I, I found that out. Oops, did I turn this off? Okay. Okay, great. You all can hear me well? Yeah. All right. And uh, first of all, I have a ministry, Bible Time for Seniors. I think I passed out uh, a card uh, as a picture of me and my wife. My wife has passed away, and we did this together for several years. We've been all over the United States. We've been as far as uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I uh, did a Bible Time presentation there, some multimedia presentation, including uh, the, the music and uh, a, present, a clear presentation of the gospel, uh, and um, uh, it, uh, with a, on a wide screen with a projector, and uh, uh, so uh, it's it's, uh, it's an interactive uh, type of, of presentation, and it's for uh, seniors, and it's uh, been very fruitful. In fact, uh, when I was in Pittsburgh, uh, my mother came to see. Uh, what her son was up to and what he was doing. So he, she came to my presentation and got saved. And right now, she's in heaven now because of that, that presentation. And then my dad uh, was, was there as, as a senior, and I never thought he would ever get saved, but I, I led him to the Lord on his deathbed. So uh, we're gonna, uh, I'll get to uh, see them. And uh, my wife and I, uh, we, uh, we were just, just so so close. We we loved each other dearly, and uh, but we traveled uh, Pittsburgh uh, to Virginia to uh, Georgia to Oklahoma, Tennessee, uh, Mississippi, Texas, uh, Utah, Arizona. We, we've been we've been all over, and we've done hundreds of uh, uh, these Bible time presentations, and it's just been a, a, a wonderful time. Still doing it, and I promised her on her deathbed that I would continue doing it. Uh, and uh, so, and I'm still doing that. And so, uh, just want to do the report now. Uh, COVID really put a, a blanket on things. Uh, we were uh, doing as many as three, four Bible times per, for senior sessions at nursing homes, rehab facilities, assisted living facilities. And we were do doing this um, uh, three, four times a week. Then COVID came along and just completely shut everything down. It wouldn't even let me in. And now I can still get into the nursing homes and all because I'm fully vaccinated. They, they require that. You have to wear a mask. It's hard to preach when you're wearing a mask. But uh, they require the mask. And, uh, and I have to go through uh, a different ritual every time I go into a nursing home. But they do let me in. And uh, some of them uh, now they, they trust me to, to where I, I can uh, get in a lot easier than I did at the first because uh, it was difficult. So uh, in the past year, uh, I've uh, put the gospel in front of 185 people and 29 of them got saved. And that's what I wanna talk about today. How come those people got saved? Why is it uh, that I had nothing to do with it? Not, that's the truth, They're not my delivery or anything. As you can tell, I'm not, I'm not all that eloquent uh, about things, but I, but I do know that uh, uh, there's miracle working power in uh, the gospel message and, and the word of God. And that's why these 29 people are passed from death and life and receive Christ as their savior. And I give God all of the glory, all of the credit, because it wasn't me, because I didn't, you know, I, didn't, I, I don't have the, 
the, uh, the, a message that has the miracle of work and powers like that of the gospel. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so uh, there's the report. And uh, you are one of my supporting churches. And I thank you for your, uh, your prayers and uh, for your monetary support. And uh, most, <laughs> most of the support anymore nowadays goes into gasoline you know, to, uh, to get me to the places where I need to preach. But uh, I'm thankful the Lord has, in every way, over the uh, seven, eight years now that I've been doing this, uh, he has provided all of my needs. And uh, I haven't lacked for anything at any time. And uh, I'm associated with uh, BIMI, Baptist International Missions Incorporated. And uh, I think the record shows that I'm the oldest missionary that they have on their books. So uh, I'm an associate missionary, not the kind of missionary that uh, where they, uh, you know, be sending in foreign lands and whatnot, but they have me on the books as a missionary. That helps me a lot to get into uh, churches and, and places because I mentioned BIMI, they know their reputation, and so that's good. But uh, praise the Lord, he has provided. Uh, and so, uh, am, am I to continue on at this point? Oh, yes. Okay, all right. So today's lesson, uh, if you would stand, uh, in honor of the Word of God, appreciate it if you would, and get your Bibles out because we're going to be uh, let your fingers do the walking through the pages of the Bible. There's going to be a lot of that today. I, I really believe in the Word of God. Let God speak for Himself. And uh, turn, if you will, to 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to go one through four. Uh, that's the my mainstay passage of Scripture when I go do ministry. Whenever I lead somebody to the Lord. I start there, and that's the declaration of the gospel, and that's what the title of this sermon is, Declare the Gospel, and that's the most important thing that you can do as a Christian right now is to declare the gospel, especially in this age. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, let's read it along with me if you would. Moreover, brethren, <clears throat> I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. We're going to go into that verse in detail. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in mind what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, again, according to the scriptures. Let's pray, if you will, and then you can be seated. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for uh, the presentation uh, of the gospel. I thank you that, uh, uh, that you wrote it down for us so that we would not get it wrong. And, uh, Lord, I just uh, pray that you would teach us from your word. As we open your word, Lord, just speak to us and teach us from it. And, and uh, I know that you have something for each and every one of us. And I pray that each person will receive a blessing for having come today. And I thank you for the privilege of, of uh, sharing uh, what you have for us uh, with these uh, precious people here. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as an introduction... There are thousands of declarations being made all over the place. And this is, uh, I'm speaking uh, to myself also. I'm preaching here to myself because I was getting, <clears throat> I was getting distressed and upset and, and uh, depressed and anxious about all of the things that I'm hearing, declarations about, uh, well, you know, you got to, you know, in order to go into this restaurant, you got to wear a mask. And, and other places, you don't have to wear a mask. And you get on an airplane, you got to wear a mask. And, uh, and now I, I, I have to ask the stewardess, you know, I see, I see all these, some of these people not wearing masks. I said, is it required? Anymore? She said, no, not right now, but it may come later on. So there's all kinds of declarations that are coming out. There's declarations about uh, crime and declarations about the, uh, all, of, all of the, uh, uh, the, gas, the gasoline crisis and the cost of food and recession, everything, and you got, uh, uh, political pundits that are coming on talking about making all kinds of de declarations about things. And what they're doing is they're giving you all of these statements, trying to change the conversation and get you to come over to their point of view 
uh, for votes in the medical profession. They're, they're trying to uh, get you to, to wear a mask or not, or to get vaccinated or not, or to, uh, to give you advice on whether you should celebrate Christmas or not, or whether I can go into nursing homes or not. All of these things. And I'm getting messages, uh, declarations of all kinds that are just all over the map. And, they're, and it's very disturbing. Uh, so, uh, but uh, all of this, again, is, is uh, designed to drive the narrative and the conversations. When I have conversations with my neighbors and all, I used to sit out there and first thing they want to know, you think there's going to be a recession? And then we'd get into a conversation about that. And we would both make ourselves uh, depressed and, and anxious at the same time in, in talking to that. But, you know, I have... I've been asking God to, uh, to help me with that because I was losing my peace uh, just recently, you know, just losing, just losing my peace about thinking about all of these things. And then it, it dawned on me, what's really, what is really important? So I'm asking God, and, and I would hope that you would do the same. I'm asking God to help me to rededicate my life to direct the narrative in America back to Jesus Christ. And after all, that's the thing that's the most important. Christ's last command uh, should be our first priority among the uh, many and confusing narratives that are out there. And that what really matters is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So in the bottom line, that is all there, uh, that we should be concerned about or thinking about. Christ is the answer for this life, and uh, he's, uh, he's the answer uh, for uh, eternal life. And so that's the thing that we should be focused on. He did not call us to a reactive life, to all of these different messages. Oh my goodness, you know, I, I got to do this. And I got to, uh, you know, get some mask. And I got to, we react to all of these messages that, that are out there. Politicians are, are putting out things that we react to that. And it, it's just very dis confusing and disturbing. But he's caused, he's caused us to, to do one thing, and that is to champion uh, the gospel cause, the gospel about the resurrect, uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Matthew 28 and uh, 19 and 20. And now I'm going to be going through, you might want to just write down the references because I'm going to be zipping through here pretty fast. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. What did God tell us to do? He said, Go ye uh, therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's the focus that we should have. That's the message that we should present. And then in Mark 16, 15, uh, this is my favorite. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's our charter. That's what we should be all about. And all of these other things, uh, you know, Facebook and, and multimedia and the news and all of this other thing, uh, I would submit to you it'd be a good idea to shut those things down for a while or not look at them as much because all they'll do is destroy your peace and you're looking at wor the world's idea of what you should be thinking about and what you should be doing. We should be listening to God in his holy word as to what we should be doing. So the only commission given to us uh, is, is this one, that, that one that we have. It's the, the only the gospel can change a heart. And that's what we need to do. We need uh, uh, change hearts. Uh, people, I, I was in the uh, uh, lift that came up here today. And again, he could hardly speak English. He was from Cuba and uh, just... Uh, in, in the course of conversation, he was talking about, his, oh, this is so bad, and, and the cost of gas, and I, my, my family is in Cuba, and I'm here, and, and I'm sending money back there, and I can't find a place to live. But he was just going on and on. And so I shared with him, I said, well, you know, uh, when uh, we, we, I shared the gospel with him. I said, you know, when you trust Christ as your Savior, he's obligated to take care of you. God is obligated to take care of you. And that's why I have peace, and I don't worry about those things, because I know that no matter what happens, he's going to be there, and he has never failed me. He always takes care of me. And if you place your trust and confidence in God, and you trust Christ as your only hope for heaven, he'll save your soul, and he'll give you that peace, and you don't have to worry about these things anymore. 
And uh, my goodness, well, by the time we got here, he was, he was really in, into that message. And uh, that's, how, uh, that's how it happens. That's the message that we have. I could sit there and talk to him. I say, yeah, you know, the rent and everything, but if you go over here, the rent will be cheaper. And if you do this, you know, blah, blah, blah. I could go on about secular solutions to things, and they wouldn't have done him a bit of good. But the thing to tell him, and that's what we should all do, the thing that we should tell people is that they should place their confidence and trust in Christ. And he's given us instruction on how to deal with every situation right here in the Word of God. And if there's a peace uh, that's there knowing that the one who made me, the one that created the, the, the worlds, uh, he's the one in charge, and I don't have to fret about anything. In fact, he told us not to uh, fret about anything because he has everything under control. And there's a Gallup poll uh, on, uh, based on the mental health back in 2019. It said, you know, they, they, they were asking, you know, well, uh, do you feel like you're mentally okay, stable and everything? 86% said, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going nuts in it. I still got all my marbles, you know. And, uh, but one year later, that number was 76%. So we, gotta, we, we, we have a, a problem. People are, are getting stressed out and depressed, and they're going through uh, all kinds of things. And uh, there, by the way, there was another Gallup poll uh, where that same question was asked of people who are church going. You say, you go to church, and then they ask them the same question. Well, 80%, 86% and better, even at the worst of times. Uh, was uh, the num number there. So uh, it's a good thing to go to church. Uh, uh, to go to church. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. So I take it that all of you here, you, you, you know, you're feeling good up there and everything. So, and it's all because you, you're here uh, sitting under the word of God. Thank the Lord. But there are millions, millions of people that are hurting out there and they're experiencing a depression and anxiety. I look at it as an opportunity because just like with this young man that uh, brought me over to the church here, uh, you have an opportunity to present them a, a solution, not the world solution, but the, uh, a solution uh, that uh, uh, the only way they can uh, have uh, respite or, or peace from, uh, from the things that they're experiencing is a relationship with Jesus Christ. We have the message. And uh, so Paul here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 through 4, he's challenging uh, the, the Corinthian church about this issue of the gospel. Uh, he's saying, now you've been saved. And I want to tell you that, that uh, what saved you uh, was the gospel message. And the gospel message is all about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of the gospel is the one that saved your soul. And that's the message that I want you uh, to preach also. And he's reminding them of the importance of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, at the time, Paul had, uh, he, uh, both uh, physically, he presented the gospel. He, everybody, anybody that he would, that would listen, that's all he preached. He was a gospel preaching machine. And so he preached the gospel, and then he wrote it down. God used him by the uh, uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, had him write it down for our benefit. And it came all the way up to us through uh, preaching, and we're going to see that in a moment. So let's go over some of the basics of uh, the gospel. What is the gospel? What is, why is it so important? First of all, he says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, he says, Moreover, the brethren, brethren, people that have been saved, you've accepted Christ as your Savior, so I can call you brothers. I declare unto you the gospel. I declare. There's a declaration. And uh, that declaration means to make known. And so this was something that hadn't been known before, not to this degree. God revealed to Paul the gospel the true gospel, the pure gospel that we are using right now. And uh, so we're using right out of one of the letters that he wrote, which became scripture. Uh, we're using that to find out, what, to know what that gospel is. I know that I'm preaching the same gospel that Paul preached because when I open my Bible and I share the gospel, I open it up to 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, I give them the same thing. And Paul wrote it, and I'm just quoting it, so I know I'm giving them 
uh, the, the real deal. And believe it or not, people don't know. They don't know what the gospel is. You ask children, especially children, you ask children, uh, you know, who is Jesus Christ? They don't have a clue. They think that Jesus Christ is, you know, uh, one, one guy thought he was a superhero. Uh, another person thought, well, uh, Jesus Christ is, is like Abraham Lincoln, wasn't he? Uh, or he's, he's like uh, George Washington. Uh, didn't he live during the time that George Washington was? You know, the, you, you, you'd be shocked at the, at the things that you're doing. And the reason that they're thinking this way is because nobody has declared the gospel to them. Nobody has told them about uh, Jesus Christ, and they just simply don't know. I, I see this among seniors. I go into the, the nursing homes, and I uh, my, the first presentation that I always give, the one that I always give, my standby first presentation at a, a nursing home is, who is Jesus Christ? That's what I present. And so I tell them, I say, well, let me tell you what, I said, I could tell you what Jesus, who Jesus Christ is, but I'm going to let God tell you who Jesus Christ is. The Bible is the, uh, the word holy means perfect. And uh, this is the word of God. And he wrote this book. This is his love letter to you. And everything that I know about heaven, hell, about Jesus, about God and his character and, and uh, about everything uh, is in this book. And so far be it for me to, to try to tell you, but let God tell you. And so I go right into that. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He's God the Son. He is the third uh, person in the, in, the, in the Godhead. What did he do? He created everything. And it's, that really opens there. I, I said, the Bible says that all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So he created the worlds. And he holds the worlds together. Right now, if he were to let go and have a, a mental lapse, which is impossible, uh, the whole world would just go. Psh, and he's holding everything together. And, and the Bible tells us, uh, that he is the solution to our sin problem. Uh, the, the Bible said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by, by me. That's why he came. He came into this world. And uh, think about that. The God of heaven that created all of the universe, they put this new telescope up there, looked way up there, and they cranked it all the way up, and all they saw is more of the same, wall-to-wall -wall galaxies. Well, Jesus did that. And yet he would come down to this one little speck. Blows my mind. He came down to this one little speck and died on the cross on my behalf. So, uh, what a what a savior! You know, amazing. It blows my mind every time I think about it. You know. But uh, but uh, there he is. You know, and so this is what I do when I go into nursing room. I tell I tell them who Jesus Christ is, and then once I tell them who Jesus Christ is, uh, now let me tell you why he's important to you, and then we go into the gospel, the gospel message, and that's what get people gets people saved when you declare the gospel. Anyway, uh, Paul understood. He understood that this, it was a privilege to have been revealed this divine revelation. It was revealed to Paul the specifics of, of the gospel that we present today to people. In Galatians 1, 11 and 12, Paul certified it. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, that's your message, Paul. Where did you, you, you conjure that one up? He didn't go to uh, any divinity school or anything like that. God spoke to him and revealed to him directly and passed it down to us through him. But I certify you, brethren, Galatians 1, 11 and 12, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of of Jesus Christ. So he's telling us, I certify, I'm telling you what happened. You know, I cannot lay claim to this message. It was given to me uh, to give to you. And that, and that was Paul's testimony. He said, I'm glad that I am giving you a message that, that God gave me. I certify. And so uh, he's uh, telling them because I'm sure he, he ran into all kinds of naysayers that, that thought he conjured this thing up. And uh, so it came down to us, all the way to us, through preaching, and it started off there. Uh, let's, let's take a look at Acts uh, chapter 9 and verse 17 through 20. We see when, Christ, when uh, Paul met Jesus Christ uh, along that Damascus road, and, and, Jesus, and, and the Lord knocked him off the, cross, uh, the horse and, and the, uh, the blinding light that uh, made him blind, and, 
and uh, Jesus spoke to him and, and uh, uh, gave him uh, direction about uh, the thing that he should do. He should uh, go into uh, um, uh, Damascus and, and wait there for the instructions. But uh, the Lord saved him at that, at that point in time. And it's ironic that the, God, that the Lord would pick him to propagate the gospel because he himself said, I am the chief of sinners, and God didn't refute it. And so it's ironic that he would use the chief of sinners to propagate the solution to our sin problem. And uh, God has a sense of humor, so he chose Paul. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house where Paul was, or Saul at that time, his name was Saul then, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, arose, and was baptized. And then... Uh, he had, uh, and when he had received meat, gave him something to eat, he had been fat, not eating anything in three days, uh, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples that were, were at Damascus. And straightway, and here's the important part, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Notice he didn't go to any seminary to pick this up. He didn't go to any... Uh, 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 you know, correspondence courses or, or, or do anything of that thing. He, uh, just a, f a few days after he was saved, uh, he was out there preaching the gospel, preaching uh, the, the, the message that we're preaching e even now. And so God gave him that message. And I, I like to think that a normal Christian, this is one thing I look, you know, when you, when you get somebody saved, you look for the evidence of salvation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, the thing I look about, I lead somebody to Christ, and they say, yeah, even in the old nursing homes. The first thing I look for and the first thing I notice when uh, they've had a real experience with Christ is they want to share it with somebody else. They either tell their neighbors or they, they, they you know, the, uh, this past, what's the day? Sunday. Uh, this past Wednesday, I did a Bible time for seniors. Two people got saved. And then two others who had been saved at a previous session, what did they do? I, I, I led those two to the Lord, and we, we just, uh, uh, you know, they prayed the sinner's prayer and asked the Lord to save them. And, but there are two others, they called me over, and they said, can you pray with me? I said, sure. And uh, two of them, and they said, I, 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 I want to see my, my mother saved. I want to, uh, my, my mother, but my uh, uh, children saved and, and my grandchildren and can you pray that they would get saved? And that's, so I pray. And so that's evidence of salvation. When God saves a person, he puts in them a desire to see others get saved. And so uh, new Christians, uh, that's, that's our natural response is to tell others how to be saved. Uh, and uh, and, and, and la yet last year, only 4% of uh, people who claim to be Christians attempted to share their faith with people. That's, that's shameful. But uh, um, when I first got saved, I got saved in Fallon, Nevada, and I was, at, uh, I was in the Air Force, and I was stationed at uh, uh, Fallon Naval Air Station. And I remember my wife uh, in, in First Baptist Church of Fallon, uh, my wife uh, uh, took me there, and uh, I heard the preaching, and the pastor there led me to the Lord. And what was the first thing I did? Uh, I did the unthinkable. I went out there and stocking, started knocking on the doors <laughs> of of uh, the, the residents uh, in, at Fallon Naval Air Station, the military folk. And uh, anybody and everybody that would listen, I would share the gospel with them until I got notice from the base commander. He, had, he called me into his office and sat there and told me that I'm not to do that. And, and uh, there have been some complaints and blah, blah, blah. I didn't know any better. Uh, all I wanted to do was to, to, I want somebody else to share in this wonderful thing that I had just experienced. And so that's an evidence of salvation. We have a, we want a desire to see other people get saved. And Paul not only preached it, of course, but he wrote it down for our benefit under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have it here in the scriptures. 
and uh, and First Corinthians fourteen thirty seven. If any man, Paul says, if any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, let him acknowledge <clears throat> acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of God. And so, uh, he, again, affirming that it's not his message, uh, it, but it's God's message. And then First Thessalonians two and verse thirteen. It's authenticated again. For this cause uh, also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of the word which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now this is the word of God. It doesn't contain the word of God. It is the word of God. Every word in here uh, is, is uh, God's word. It was passed down to us uh, from uh, all of the many authors, the uh, 66 books, and uh, uh, all of it is, is uh, inspired of God. That's why it's called the Holy Bible. The word holy means perfect. And so if you want to find out uh, what it is that you need to declare to people, uh, uh, gospel-wise, that will save their souls, you have to go to the book. You have to let God tell you, and it's all written right here. The Bible is the very word of God, and I'm thankful for this, this heritage of how it was passed along uh, for me to have it. It takes the burden off of me. I don't have to figure it out. I just declare it. And so 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given, is given, given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Everything you need. You don't have to take a tool chest or a big truck with uh, all kinds of gear and everything like the you know uh, people who, who have to do work. My toolkit, the whole thing is right here. And it even comes shrunk. I don't have it with me, but yeah, I carry my little derringer in my pocket here. I can pull it out at any time. And uh, so it's the word of God. And that's the one uh, and that, uh, so that the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Everything you need is right here. And all you have to do is get into it, study it, memorize it, because there are going to be opportunities like the, with this uh, lift guy that uh, brought me over here. Uh, I didn't have the Bible in a convenient place where I could talk to them. So uh, by memorizing, I can quote it to them. And uh, the main thing is to get the word of God out in one fashion or another. You can do it by, if you don't have time, you can, uh, you can whoop out uh, uh, tracts. I call them these, I call them little preachers. You know, you can pass these out. And the, the entire plan of salvation is right here. You can give these out. You can quote it to them. You can stop and talk to them. And uh, uh, there's all kinds of ways to, to get it out there. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself now. And uh, you need to look at Fox's Book of Martyrs and, and the Book of Acts, men and women. They were willing to die for this message. This message is just so important. There's nothing more important than the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. Let me give you some quotes from, the, uh, from history that, that will help you get an appreciation for the gospel and how it came along up to the point where we are right now. Uh, let's look at this here. One of the early church fathers, Irenaeus, in about 160 AD wrote, and I quote, we have learned from none others the plan of our salvation than from those through whom the gospel has come down to us. Talking about Paul. He said the gospel came down written uh, through uh, to us which they did at one time pro proclaim by word, by, uh, publicly and at a later period by the will of God handed down to us the scriptures to be the ground and pillar of our faith. Now here's a guy 160 years uh, after, uh, you know, after Christ, uh, way back then, and he's, he's, uh, he's, he's telling uh, folks that this is uh, how we appreciate the the word of God, and, and, and this is where uh, we get our message from, and he's uh, showing appreciation for it. And then a little later, William Tyndall, uh, the great Baptist translator of the Bible into the English language, 
and the great uh, British reformer. He wrote in 1500, quote, the kingdom of heaven, which is the gospel, is like a net that catches good and bad. The Bible is the eternal exemplar, exemplar of the Christian faith, the sole criteria of our doctrine. And, oh, wow, think about that. And then uh, Dietrich uh, uh, Phillips, he was an Anabaptist back in 1500 in Holland. And he wrote, he said, the gospel is the word of grace, the joyful message of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the only Redeemer and our Savior. At 1500, Daniel Webster, well, this is the one I like the most because, uh, it, and you need to listen to this one carefully because this, uh, it pertains to the, the state of our country right now. Daniel Webster, uh, he's one of the great American patriots. He wrote this, if the power of the gospel is not felt throughout the length and breadth of the land, America, anarchy and misrule, degradation and misery, corruption and darkness will reign without mitigation or end. The thought is one to cause solemn reflection on the part of every patriot and every Christian. Now, think about today. That's exactly what's happening today, isn't it? All of these bad things. We need to pray for America. America is only great so long as America is good and there is no goodness without the teaching of the Word of God. So uh, to the degree that the Word of God is held in esteem in America, to that degree America will be blessed and is, you can call it a Christian nation, but not now. This is not it. George Mueller, I'll make that one the last one. George Mueller, the great preacher and the man that had all of the orphanages in Bristol, England, back in the 1800s, said, the gospel is for all. It says in the Bible, go into all the world and preach the gospel. I must continue to distribute tracts and share this good news. That's George Mueller. And uh, so you see, we have a legacy. And uh, so the best way to help America right now the best way is to get hearts changed to lead someone to Jesus Christ. That's the only hope. You can sit there and try to improve the flesh. There's no good thing in the flesh. And, and try to get people to turn over a new leaf and think right. And uh, you can demonstrate. And you can uh, go, go to the polls and vote politicians in. It's not gonna. It's not gonna help. There has to be a change of heart, and that can only come through Jesus Christ. So I submit to you that if you want to help America, go out there and win somebody to Christ. We have a great Christian heritage, as we just read here. Uh, it is now our turn to be a part of that heritage. It's your turn. And uh, all these people, many of them gave their lives for this message. And we need to take it seriously and realize that this is the most important message of our time, of any time. You have a story, and uh, you have a story, and your history must be told of what Jesus Christ has done for you. You need to share it, you, and uh, it's, it's more important now than ever. And then looking at the co context, I look at the, there's uh, the, the context of the Bible. You know, a lot of people use the, uh, the gospel as, uh, um, as, an as an adjective. You know, there's gospel music, and there's, there's gospel this, and there's gospel that. And, uh, but we need to get back to uh, the gospel message. And that's the uh, thing that will save people's souls. We must declare, declare the gospel as just as the early Christians did. And so uh, we're going to get into that uh, in, in just a moment. The demonstration of the gospel. The demonstration of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, chapter 1 in our text. Uh, uh, verse 1, uh, chapter 15 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. And we are sorry that it was preached. Which also ye have received. They received it and, and, uh, and, and believed on it. And here's the part for demonstration. And wherein ye stand. Where do you stand? If you stand in the gospel, that means uh, that you, you're going to be standing in it. It's going to be surrounding you. It's going to be your position. It's going to be your disposition. Everything about you says there is a person who believes in the gospel. 
And uh, uh, we want to be like that. Wherein ye stand, our, le our lives should be a demonstration uh, of the gospel. And so what does the world have to offer? Uh, what is, if you stand in the world, uh, all you got to offer is hate, destruction, demonstrations, anger, depression, all of these awful things. And, but uh, what do we have to offer as, a, as, a Christ, as Christians? We have the gospel of Jesus Christ, period. And when I tell somebody, someone, when I get a chance to speak to somebody, that's the only message I can present to them. I can tell them about uh, eternal security and all of these other things. And, and these are uh, uh, surrounding, you know, they, they surround the gospel, but it's the gospel message that I present to them as a solution to whatever it is they bring up. Having problems with their wife? Gospel. Uh, having problems with school? Having problems with work? Having pro problems, like this guy with that, uh, this lift driver? Having problems finding a, uh, a, a place to live? Having a problem trying to make a living? Having a problem with your children? Uh, well, let me tell you who, the one who can fix that and give them the gospel. That's right. And so in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is free. That's the wonderful part of it. It's free. Uh, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Says 1 Thessalonians 1.10. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. God raised him from the dead. Even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. He saved us from hell. He saved you from hell. Think about that. And... Uh, we need to get that word out and spread it and share it with folks. This is what God did for me. He can do the same for you. And I, I just remember that song. I think about rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Remember that, that hymn that we sing? And I just remember my junior church. This is the one there. We always sang. We kind of motioned it out. Do you, do you know, oh, Christian, you are a sermon in shoes? And then we go on. And uh, we just go on one verse after another. Little children, do you know? Oh, child, you're a sermon in shoes. You're standing in the gospel if you know Christ. The Bible says that duty demands it, and we as Christians must take that duty and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, are you reflecting this in uh, your life? Uh, when was the last time you declared the gospel? You need to tell somebody. And how do you do that? Well, you do it through those mailings that, you, that you're sending out there. Uh, you need to participate in that uh, and, and do whatever you can to help in the cause to get the word of God out and get the gospel out by going door to door and sharing the gospel here in your, your community with tracts, these little preachers that I was telling you about. We need to tell them someone cared enough to share the gospel with you. You have to think about that. Someone shared the gospel with you in one form or fashion. Now it's your turn to share it with someone else your turn. We stand in the gospel. Our life should be a gospel-centered life. Everything just be centered around the gospel. And uh, Galatians 2.20 Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so Paul, he was a, like I said, uh, he was a, uh, anybody knowing, uh, look at him, they could see where his focus was. Uh, that's all he talks about is the gospel, and rightly so. And uh, uh, we are to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. It should make your life and mine different. It should change us. Philippians 2.12, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And that's, that's not saying that you need to work for your salvation. Work out means work out of. Make, you are, the works that I do, I do because I'm saved. And I am uh, have an outpouring of desire to share this gospel that has uh, come into my heart. And we work out, or out of our own salvation with fear and trembling. And religion, on the other hand, says, well, this is what I'm going to do from God. It's all based on the flesh, and there's no conversion. A person is not born again. That second birth, that first birth, uh, will not get you to heaven. 
the first birth means that you still have that sin nature and you're dead in trespasses and sins and if you die in uh, the first birth without experiencing the second birth you will end up in in hell and religion tries to improve the first birth uh, so you turn over a new leaf you try to do the right thing and and uh, love everybody it's impossible God says it is impossible uh, to put in the flesh is impossible to please God but the gospel is the opposite if you receive Jesus Christ is your Savior. You experience that second death, and, and God comes to take up residence in you, and you have the fruit of the Spirit, the joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, goodness, meekness, all of these things that are the characteristic of God. When the, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, he changes you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and it's an inside-out relationship. He comes in, and all of those wonderful uh, things start gushing out where they're supposed to. What God has put in you, you need to let it out. And uh, that involves loving your neighbor, sharing the gospel with them, uh, giving, witnessing, and serving. And let the light of Jesus Christ shine, and uh, we are to be a demonstration of the gospel in that fashion. So. Now, uh, without that demonstration, I, I like to talk about my, my wife, Regina. Everybody that saw her, she, was, she just exuded joy, and, and uh, people knew right away, and they gravitated toward her because they knew that she was for real. They could look her in the eye, and they could see the concern for them, and, and she was able to, because of that uh, a demonstration of the gospel, she was able to lead many people to Christ. She led me to Christ. And uh, I saw Christ in her life, and I love her for it. And uh, she is um, my heart still, even to this day. But uh, I, I, I just, uh, I do all of this uh, partly to, to, uh, to honor her, because I promised her on her deathbed that I would continue doing this. And even on her deathbed, she was concerned about uh, continuing to share the gospel with others. And I'm going to do that. Uh, so, the delivery. Now, the, here's the important thing about the delivery of, of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 2 and 3, if you go there. 15, 2 and 3. By also which ye are saved, you are saved the gospel, by the gospel, if ye keep in memory uh, what I preached unto you, unless ye have uh, believed in vain. That's simply saying that thing about believing in vain. That's, that's saying that there are people who do not or did not really believe the gospel. And I have a hope I can see in my mind's eye a whole bunch of people uh, that I've shared the gospel with, there was no change, and they didn't really uh, mean it. And that's what they, they believed in, in vain, because they didn't uh, trust Christ 100% uh, uh, for their soul's salvation. They didn't repent and turn from their sin and come to know Christ their Savior. So that's what that's talking about. And then he says, for I delivered, for I delivered, here's the delivery, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according uh, to the scriptures. So the delivery is very important. And uh, we, uh, we must believe sincerely, just like just mentioned there. And it has to be sincere from the heart. That's why I tell people, I say, now, what we're going to do is we're going to pray and you talk to God and tell him what's on your heart. And, and tell him that you're sorry for your sins and, and that you want to trust Christ and him alone as your only hope for heaven. And you want to ask him to come into your heart. Be merciful to you, uh, a sinner, and, and he'll come in and, and save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll do that, he'll save your soul. But you got to mean it with all your heart. The Bible says, with the heart man believeth unto salvation. And if it doesn't come from the heart, then uh, it's like talking to this wall right here. You'll, you'll walk out of here the same way you walked in. And we must believe it sincerely. When, and we need to get back to that Bible principle of delivering the gospel in its purity. And uh, uh, that p uh, purity, truth, the true gospel is important. You can't tell people about the gospel. You have to tell them the gospel. I really believe that there's miracle working power in that message. Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. 
The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. By the way, that scripture is on my wife's uh, tombstone uh, up here on Eastern Avenue. Uh, I'm going to be visiting the grave. But uh, if you ever see her tombstone, that's the, mess, that's the verse that's on there. It's on mine, too, because I'm going to be buried there. And there are many gospels. There are many gospels. There are false gospels. Those false gospels uh, are usually embellished or they are twisted around. The true gospel is uh, perverted and it condemns people. And Galatians 1, 6, and 9. Now you, you, ought to write, you ought to write that in your Bible somewhere. If you want to find out what not to preach, here it is. And uh, uh, Paul says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have, have preached the, unto you, let him be accursed. And he said it a second time. As we said before, so uh, say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accursed. And that gospel, the true gospel, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Anything else is uh, not the gospel. Uh, there's miracle working power in that message. And there was always opposition. The devil is always there to try to pervert the gospel or to tell people not to believe it. And even Paul experienced that opposition to the gospel back, uh, back then. 1 Corinthians 15, 12. Uh, there were some people that said, ah, oh, resurrection, there's nobody can be, there's no such thing as resurrection. Paul had to deal with that. Now, if Paul says, now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? You see, in the gospel, the, it's the death and the resurrection. It's not just the death. The resurrection is ever, as much a part, even more important than the gospel because it's proof possible, positive that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he was victorious over sin and death. So if you deny the resurrection, then you got no gospel. And so Paul had to deal with that. Today we got some people that, that say that uh, you need to be baptized in order to be saved. Today some say living on Christ, living, believing on Christ is okay. But you also need water to wash the sins away. Uh, that's what I was taught in the religion that I was in uh, before I was saved. I was taught that uh, water baptism is what washes away your sins. One of the, sin one of the sacraments, baptism, confirmation, holy, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I was taught that uh, baptismal regeneration. Paul dealt with that even in his day. In 1 Corinthians 1, 17 and 18, Paul had to deal with that because people believed it. For Christ, Paul said, sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Again, there's power in the miracle working power of the word of God, the, uh, the gospel message. Uh, and, and keep in mind the thief on the cross, he was never baptized, and yet Jesus uh, told him that this day you're gonna be with me in paradise. So that, that you know, uh, but we must deliver, again, that delivery, this topic here, you must deliver the pure gospel. Don't embellish it, don't add to it, don't paraphrase it. Uh, pull out that Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians 15 and read it to them, and, the, and then go from there. They say, now I, we, we read the gospel here, and now let me tell you about the Jesus that's referred to him in this gospel and what he did on the cross of Calvary and what he did when he rose again three days later. Then you can branch off into all of the other scriptures, but this is the starting point, the declaration of the gospel. And, uh, and we need to deliver it in person. It's not just gonna be the job of the pastor or people, you know, the, uh, the staff or whatever. Everybody has to, uh, to be uh, involved. I think about the uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the soul winner at the, uh, uh, when, uh, 
when he, he was at the well and the, a woman came into the well to draw water and he struck up a conversation with her and, and he said, well, uh, where's your husband? And, and she said, well, I have no husband. She said, are you right about that? Because you, you had five husbands and the one that you're living with right now is not your husband. He, you know, he's omniscient, he knows everything. And uh, right away she perceived that and the, in the course of the conversation, uh, she, uh, uh, Jesus saved her and, and uh, she realized that the water that she came from, from was not as good as the water of life that Jesus Christ presented to her. And uh, then he's, uh, he, what did the lady do after that? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, come see a man which told me of all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto them. She personally uh, went to them. She was turned from a sinner to a soul winner in person, right there on the spot. And uh, you need to look for opportunities. You need to seek opportunities to share the gospel. Like that, that lift, the guy in the lift that was came, brought me here, uh, you, as, as people talk, Whatever they talk about, they generally going to be talking about problems and this and that and the other. Christ is the answer. Just present to them Christ. Says, yeah, I don't know about all that, but I know what uh, the someone who uh, took my problem. I had the same kind of problem, and let me tell you what he did for me. And then you can get right into the gospel. We need to look for ways. Invite people over to dinner. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I I remember my daughter Jennifer. Uh, she was back then in the back. They wouldn't listen to me because she was a rebellious kid, you know. But I knew that when I'm driving along at 60, 70 miles an hour, she's not going to jump out. I have a captive audience. She ain't going nowhere. So I would just start talking to the walls and just blah, 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 and talk about the scriptures and the Bible and, you know, this, that, and the other. And she told me years later, she said, Dad, you remember all the stuff you were telling me <laughs> when, we was, when I was in the back seat? She remembered. And so you need to take every opportunity uh, to talk to your kids and, and, and when you got a captive woman. And uh, you need to look for those opportunities. First Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. First Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Always be ready to give an answer. You either have a track with you. Uh, memorize the scriptures, quote it to them, strike up a conversation with people, talk to your neighbors, talk to your people at the water cooler, at, the, at work. Take every opportunity to shout out anybody who would listen. That's what Paul did. And uh, uh, he won many people to the Lord that way. And, we, and it's the work of the entire church, just not, not, not just for the pastor and the staff. And uh, we need to all get involved. And don't follow the narrative of the world. We need to redirect the narrative back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's not only a personal invitation, but it's a personal invitation. You need to, you need to get smart about uh, ways to innovate. Now, I, I'll just bring this up. In Mark chapter 2, we need to find a way to get the gospel. But think about this. In Mark chapter 2 and verse 1 through 5, remember that guy that, uh, uh, that was sick of the palsy and his four friends were hauling him through? And the, road, and the way was blocked and there was no way for them to get in. They wanted to get their friend to, to Jesus and they had to get creative. Listen to what they did. And again, he entered in the, after some days into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there, is no, there was no room to receive them. They couldn't get in the place. No, not so much as above, about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Four people were carrying this poor guy. And when they could not get in, they could not come nigh unto him for the press. They got creative. They found a way to get to Jesus. They uncovered the roof where, they were, where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let the man down in his bed and uh, uh, wherein the, uh, was sick of the palsy. And Jesus saw their faith, and he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins forgiven me. Suppose they had given up. They found a way to get to Jesus. 
And we need to do the same way. Get creative, find a way to get that gospel out. If you have a neighbor that won't listen, invite them out to dinner, or take them out and say, you, you like hunting? Yeah, let's go hunting together. You know, and find, find a way to get that gospel to them. And then you need to deliver it with power. Ephesians 6, 18 through 20, we're almost done here. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication uh, for all saints and for me. He said, I want you to pray. Uh, these are the things he's asking for prayer. Paul says, and pray for me. Now you would think he wouldn't need it because he's, I mean, he's the author. He, he's the one that got the, the revelation. And if anybody knew the gospel backwards and forwards, it was him, but he needed prayer too. And pray for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that wherein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, that's a prayer for us too. We need to do that. We need to have that anointing on our life regarding the gospel. We all must have that anointing. And then we need to uh, pray every day. That, I, might, I never forget my wife. Every morning she would pray. We would pray together. And she was there. And Lord, I don't know who you got for me today, but I just pray that you would bring somebody that needs the gospel across my path so, and, and, uh, so that I can share it. And she did that every day. And boy, the Lord did. In fact, the, when she got saved, she was selling world book encyclopedias door to door. And she knocked on this door. The lady didn't buy any book because I had run up a big telephone bill when I was stationed up in Alaska and she was trying to help pay for it. But she went in there and this lady said, you know, I've been praying for somebody to share this wonderful message with. And I guess it's you. And so she shared the word. And that's how Regina got saved. She got saved selling encyclopedias. And this lady had been praying and asking for somebody to, to share the gospel. And my wife took that to heart and started doing that herself. That's amazing. Wonderful. Acts 1-8. Uh, and God said, you, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, uh, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria. And unto the other parts of the world, you have to receive that anointing. It has to be God that does the saving. And, uh, and he does it through the message. And we have to, our privilege is to deliver the message. And the Spirit's privilege and uh, uh, desire is to convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment using that message. And uh, again, you must be born again. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, you can't repair the old nature. You are born in sin. That means that you have nothing. You can't do anything like a, a pig's uh, nature is to go oink, oink. <laughs> you can't make him talk because that's his nature. That's, he, can't, he can't change that. If, if there's any uh, hope for a Christian, for an unsaved person, he has to be born again, completely made over, made into a new creature. I think of John Newton, the man who wrote... Uh, amazing grace he was a rascal awful person anybody looking at him would say that, that if anybody was fit for hell it was him but uh, God came into his life Jesus came into his life and changed him and changed him to a point where he was able to write one of the greatest hymns of all time amazing grace that saved a wretch like me so it's wonderful and so um, uh, so we uh, so we're born again you need to be born again and the only person that that can uh, make that happen is is God Jesus Christ he's in fact Jesus himself said uh, uh, you verily verily I say unto thee except the man be born of water and the spirit he shall not enter into the kingdom of God the water is the you know you heard the the woman say well the baby's almost here the, my water broke that's the water that's the water he's talking about that that's the first birth but the second birth is to be born of the Spirit, to be born of God. And when that happens, uh, then you become uh, born again. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, the gospel, which liveth and abideth forever. And, uh, and so uh, I've, I've got more here about being born again, but I think we'll, I've 
given you enough. But uh, if you have not trusted Christ, as you, have, if you don't know for certain that heaven will be your home. I will stand. I will be down here. I will be available. And I'll be glad to share the wonderful gospel. It will be my privilege to share it with you to show you how you can know for certain that heaven will be your home. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. He will save your soul and make you into a new creature. And there's no self-reform involved in it. He, you come just as you are. He will fix you, and you will uh, walk out of here and lay your head on your pillow tonight knowing that if I close my eyes in death and I will open my eyes absent from the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And uh, you, can, you can know that today, and you can know the peace that passes all understanding. Thank you so much.